This episode of Real Science is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Sign up today at curiositystream.com slash real science and get free access to watchnebula.com. It's the one thing everyone can agree on. Mosquitoes are the worst. For some, they are simply the ruiner of picnics and camping trips. But for a huge fraction of the world, they are much more than a nuisance. Mosquitoes cause more human suffering than any other organism because of the horrific diseases they carry. Over a million people worldwide die from mosquito-borne diseases every year. In a previous video, I talked about malaria, perhaps the most devastating of all the mosquito-borne illnesses, killing about half a million people each year. And while less common, other diseases like West Nile virus, yellow fever, and dengue fever are each insidious in their own way, debilitating and deadly to many in the tropics and subtropics. Some diseases like malaria are declining, but other diseases like dengue are very much on the rise. In the past 30 years, the worldwide incidence of dengue has risen 30-fold. Billions get spent trying to combat these diseases. Vaccines, insecticides, education programs, bed nets, treatment drugs, prevention drugs. There are so many things scientists do to try to stem the tide of infections. But even as progress is made in one region, infections will flare up in others. It's like the worst game of whack-a-mole imaginable. It takes an unprecedented, coordinated effort across many geographic and political lines to even make a dent, and an insane amount of money. But much of the current funding has plateaued, and some of the drugs that have been used for years are becoming less and less effective. The malaria parasite in particular has started to develop resistance to currently available drugs. Insecticide resistance is also becoming a challenge in many mosquito species, including the widespread and usually invasive Aedes aegypti. And this is why some scientists are looking towards a totally new approach, something radical and controversial to end the whack-a-mole game once and for all, genetically modified mosquitoes. In theory, their widespread release could lead to the total extinction of certain species of mosquitoes, eliminating the vector for so many deadly diseases. It's an extreme idea, but a future with GM mosquitoes flying freely in our world may not be that far away. This summer, genetically modified Aedes aegypti mosquitoes could be released in the US for the first time, in Florida and in Texas. So is this a sudden Jurassic Park experiment, or the logical next step in controlling mosquito-borne illness? In May of this year, the EPA and the state of Florida unanimously approved an experimental use permit for millions of GM mosquitoes to be released in the Florida Keys for a landmark project. The mosquitoes are genetically modified male Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, known as OX5034, branded as Friendly TM mosquitoes, developed by the company Oxitec. Aedes aegypti are an invasive species in most places they exist. Originally from Africa, they have spread worldwide to almost every tropical and subtropical area. They are often described as the cockroach of mosquitoes. They thrive specifically living around people and are hard to get rid of. They lay their eggs in any container they can find, like inside of a clogged gutter, a toilet tank, a flower pot, or discarded bottles or bottle caps, making it hard to get a handle on their spread. They can bite multiple people during their lifespan, creating a huge potential to spread viruses. And unluckily for humans, they carry so many horrible ones. Zika, the microcephaly-causing virus, and dengue, often called breakbone fever for how painful it is, are some of the worst ones they carry. And this is why the Aedes aegypti mosquito has been targeted as a candidate for the GM technology. At the heart of the so-called friendly mosquito is something called a self-limiting gene. It starts with Aedes aegypti mosquito eggs, which are injected with short pieces of DNA that contain the self-limiting gene sequence, along with a fluorescence gene that acts as a marker. This lethal gene is a tetracycline transcriptional activator variant, or TTAV gene. Once introduced into the mosquito's genome, it encodes a protein that blocks transcriptional machinery for several other genes that are essential to mosquito development. So without essential genes being expressed, the mosquito larvae die before becoming adults. But simply injecting the TTAV gene into these eggs would only be useful in killing the handful of mosquitoes you give it to. 
hardly an economical way to kill off the trillions of mosquitoes that exist in the world. For the gene technology to be useful, the mosquitoes need to be able to pass the lethal gene down to their offspring. And for this reason, the lethal gene has a corresponding antidote. To keep the mosquito larvae with this lethal gene alive, they can be given tetracycline, a common antibiotic. The lethal T-Tav protein cannot block the transcription of the other essential mosquito genes when it's bound to tetracycline. This can therefore keep the GM larvae alive until adulthood, when the gene is no longer lethal. So in the lab, mosquito eggs are injected with the self-limiting gene, and the GM mosquito larvae are then reared in water containing tetracycline. This way, they can develop normally into adult mosquitoes. Then, when adult GM mosquitoes are released and breed with wild, non-GM mosquitoes, their offspring inherit the lethal T-Tav gene. And without tetracycline in their environment, they don't survive into adulthood. Over time, and with enough GM mosquitoes released, this technology has the ability to hugely suppress the numbers of mosquitoes in the wild. And to make the technology even more powerful, scientists recently found a way to ensure that the lethal gene only kills the female offspring. Because of this, one copy of the T-Tav gene remains in some of the male offspring of the injected mosquitoes, who can then pass it on to some of their offspring. This allows the gene to kill more mosquitoes across multiple generations, until it eventually disappears from the gene pool after about 10 generations. If effective, this friendly mosquito technology could almost completely protect communities from dengue, yellow fever, Zika, and other mosquito-borne illnesses carried by the Aedes aegypti mosquito without needing insecticides. And the hope is that soon, this same technology could be applied to any of the most damaging mosquito species, including the Anopheles mosquito that carries malaria. The newest iteration of the technology is what is slated to possibly be tested in Florida at the end of the summer, and Texas soon after that. But if these trials go ahead, they will not be the first time GM mosquitoes have been tested in the wild. Previous generations of the technology have already been tested, with field trials taking place in Panama, the Cayman Islands, Malaysia, and perhaps most significantly, Brazil. The field trials in Brazil began in 2011 with the first generation of the friendly mosquito technology, OX513A. The studies were conducted in the semi-arid northeast of Brazil, in suburbs with a huge amount of dengue. Aedes aegypti thrived there due to the amount of stored water and a high human population, and thus provided the perfect place to test the technology. Male mosquitoes with the lethal gene insertion were dispersed in the study area by opening release devices through the window of a moving car. These mosquitoes then went on to mate with the local population of females, and their offspring, having inherited the T-Tav gene, could not survive. Oxitec reports that in this study, the local Aedes aegypti population was reduced by 80 to 95% after a year of consistent releases. Some critics of the study claim that the suppression of mosquitoes was more like 60 to 70 percent, but even still, that is far better than traditional methods like insecticide spraying, which rarely achieve much more than 50 percent suppression. Since then, Oxitec has also tested their second generation of friendly mosquitoes, OX5034 in Brazil, and achieved a similar result, with reports of up to 98 percent suppression in just a 13-week window. And this is the same technology that has been granted an experimental use permit for field trials in Florida and Texas. These places don't currently have devastating mosquito-borne disease outbreaks like many places in the tropics, but dengue and Zika have both worryingly popped up in these places in recent years. Health officials are trying to keep these diseases at bay, and their occurrence is an ever-present possibility. And while the results from the field trials so far have been promising, the question on everyone's mind is, is it safe? Experiments with GM mosquitoes are often compared to Jurassic Park, implying that these experiments could lead to drastic, out of control and dire outcomes. That releasing these mosquitoes could open an unforeseen Pandora's box that we cannot close again. And while yes, it is impossible to foresee every outcome, the technology can be assessed with what we know about it and what we know about genetics in general. 
The main risk that opponents of this technology want to avoid is the potential for harm to humans, an important and valid concern. Critics claim that there is a risk that the genes from the GM mosquito could be transferred to humans or other animals that have been bitten. But a GM mosquito biting a human is unlikely to begin with, because only the females bite, and the females are engineered to die. But in the unlikely event that some females do survive and do bite people, the transfer of genetic material from mosquito to human just doesn't happen, GMO or not. Mosquitoes have been feeding on humans for more than 100 million years. By assessing the genomes of humans and many mosquito species, we can see that there is no evidence of gene transfer via blood feeding. Even if this hypothetically were to occur, even at extremely low frequencies, we would be able to see DNA sequences from human feeding mosquitoes in humans, and from bird feeding mosquitoes in birds, and so on. And the reverse is also true. Even if animals consume the GM mosquitoes, animals do not incorporate DNA from their food into their genome, GMO or not. Numerous studies have shown that livestock or chickens that eat GM corn, for example, do not have any trace of the genetic material in their bodies after eating it. Horizontal gene transfer like this is a commonly cited worry, and it should definitely continue to be studied, rigorously. But with all the information we have so far, it seems like this scenario is extremely unlikely. Other risks that critics cite are the potential impacts on the environment. The first that comes to mind for many people is, if we kill off the mosquitoes, will this harm the food chain? Will it leave the birds, frogs, and other animals with less to eat? This would certainly be a major concern if we were to eradicate all species of mosquitoes across the globe. For reference, there are 3,500 different species of mosquitoes around the world, and 80 species that occur in Florida and 85 in Texas. But the studies being proposed in Florida and Texas only focus on one species, the Aedes aegypti, which is also an invasive species in both places. And because it's non-native to the area, it has not co-evolved with other organisms in the ecosystem and is not a keystone species that other animals need for food. One day, if we do want to kill off all of the disease-carrying mosquitoes, this question will need to be studied more carefully. But even still, of the 112 genera of mosquitoes, just three bear the primary responsibility for the spread of human diseases. There are so many factors that go into trying to assess the risks of a new technology like this, and I can't begin to address them all here. If you want to read more about the risk assessments done, there is a 140-page document addressing many of the concerns put forth by the public concerning Oxitec's GM mosquitoes, which I will link below. Oxitec has gone through a lot of rigorous testing to try to make sure their technology is safe, but you can never be 100% sure that it's foolproof, and this is where all the debate comes in. A previously planned release in the Florida Keys of an earlier version of Oxitec's GM Mosquito was withdrawn after a referendum indicated significant opposition from local residents. And more recently, the public forum on Oxitec's recent permit application garnered 31,000 comments opposing release and 56 in support. And before the study can go ahead, it needs final approval by the Mosquito Control District, and it is not a sure thing that that will happen. Many people do oppose testing this technology without understanding the first thing about it. But some of the concerns with the bias of Oxitec's risk assessment are valid. Yes, the research Oxitec is doing needs to be transparent, with lots of independent research done to remove any bias. But ultimately, a new technology to fight mosquito-borne illness is desperately needed. And this looks like it could one day provide the solution that the million dead people per year probably wished they had. Our modern world is increasingly being shaped by our understanding of genetics, with major breakthroughs in GMOs and gene editing in recent years. In the next video, I will talk about CRISPR and how it is already reshaping how we think about disease. Genetic advances like this are extremely complex and inherently come with a lot of uncertainty and therefore a lot of controversy. But genetic engineering is going to be in our futures. If you want to learn more about genetics, then you should sign up for CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a streaming platform that has thousands of high-quality, high-budget documentaries. 
like this one, called Dynamic Genomes, which explores how the junk part of our DNA may actually work to decide our personal characteristics and tendencies. It's a great overview of how mysterious and complicated our genetics really are, but doesn't skimp on the science. And if you're a fan of educational content, and have accepted your fate that this lockdown will never be over, then this is the perfect time to sign up. Because a subscription to CuriosityStream now also comes with a subscription to Nebula. Nebula is a place where top educational content creators like Polyphonic, Wendover Productions, and our other channel Real Engineering can create videos freely without worrying about the YouTube algorithm or demonetization. It's a place where we can upload our content ad-free and also experiment with original content and new series. The original content is the best part of Nebula, with shows like Real Engineering's Logistics of D-Day series. The latest episode is about the logistics of air support, which required new airfields to be constructed rapidly within spitting distance of the front line. So if you sign up for CuriosityStream at curiositystream.com slash real science, you'll get a subscription to CuriosityStream and a subscription to Nebula for just $14.79 for the whole year. By signing up, you're not just supporting this channel, but all of your favorite educational content creators. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see more from me, the links to my Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon are below.